We all tell our children to chase the dreams and anything's possible. And if you're going to tell someone to chase the dreams and say anything's possible, you need to be willing to demonstrate those things. To have the belief to do that first step, it was a, a real fleeting mindset that had to exist, that this belief that it's possible, that you're invincible, that you couldn't be stopped. You know, in life we are given a label. You know, perhaps none of us enjoy being given a label, but we are given labels. And at age 17, 18, I was given this piece of paper that said I was blind. From that point on, you carry that label, that you're blind. I think the way I see fear is something to be managed something that can be used as a tool, as a driving force to help you do things and I think if, uh, <laughs> if we think of fear as a glass of water that's uh, filling up hopefully when that glass gets nearly to the top you're willing to stop so it doesn't overflow and something goes wrong. My biggest fear does come back to perhaps just not being a, a great example to my children. You know, they already think they're going to grow up and be like Daddy. Grayson thinks he's going to lose his sight. I'm like, you don't lose your sight, Grayson. And that was the original driving force that I need to show that you can strive for the impossible. I suppose now they see me doing these things and they just think it's normal. They think you can go out and do these things. So yeah, I suppose I am setting an example and I'm trying to show that, you know, there isn't a barrier because you can't see it. So it's something that you can adapt to something you can overcome. And there's this belief that if you're willing to go to the edge, you'll find a truth. You'll find something that helps you deal with life. And that's why people are willing to play with these things in the hope that in that one desperate moment, you know, a, a truth appears and you survived, so you can survive whatever's going on in your life right now.